Right then, this is a quick walk around video for an absolutely wonderful Honda Accord. This is a two litre EX automatic. Um, cars covered just 65,000 miles from new. Um, just two owners and a wonderful service history, all of which has been done by the main Honda dealers. Um, it is a lovely car, finished in this, I think it's cobalt blue, but I'm hopeless with Honda colors. Um, I should know them, but I used to work with them for years. Uh, but um, blue with black leather interior. Uh, really lovely car. Let me go around it for you. Um, obviously, 13 years old. It, it is very good. There's going to be the odd line them up. I'm going to try and pick up on what I can and where I can. So, front of the car, again, very good. Um, just a couple of little minor touch ins done on the front bumper over the years. There's nothing that merits real mention. Likewise, bonnet, very, very clean indeed. Near side of the car, nice and smooth in the panels. Can't see any obvious indentations there. And this side front alloy, one closest to the curb, and it's actually in remarkably good condition. You can just see one tiny mark on the outer edge. Panels, very nice. And this side rear alloy, again, very good. Just the tiniest light bit of curbing at the bottom, and one mark on one spoke. And around the back, still such a handsome looking car. You really are. Very nice. Sun's coming in out today. I prefer to stay in because it's better for the videos, but I can't control that. Um, off side of the car again, very, very smooth. And the panels, off side rear alloy, very good. And main panel works excellent with again just the odd tiny little sort of touching that's been done over the years, you know, just little sort of stone chips, um, which you naturally expect. Off side rear alloy, lovely. And it's in, it's in very, very, very good condition for the age of the vehicle. Come to the boot area, absolutely enormous boot. It's been kept in lovely condition. It's coming to the back of the car now, you can see this lovely leather interior, which has been kept very, very well. It's coming on the front, passenger side, footwell area, and full set of Honda mats. Uh, front passenger seat in very good condition. Just a one tiny little mark in the leather there. Uh, which obviously someone's caught something. Yeah, the leather is generally lovely. Finally coming on the driver's side. Again, very nice, clean and tidy. Football air is really good. Driver's seat again. Yeah, very good for the age. So inside the car now. Engine's running, so dash is illuminated. Fantastic interior in the car. Sat now, if you can see, working exactly as it should there. Just pop the car into reverse, and likewise, you can see the rear parking camera working exactly as intended. But it's been kept beautifully. Coming to the main dash binnacle, hopefully, you can see 65,288 miles, and then no one lights on the car at all. It's so finally just to show you owner's manual pack and lock mill nut key, all here and present with the car. Right then, this is a quick road test video and this is for a Honda Accord 2 litre EX automatic. Cars registered OY11 VTA and mileage at the start of the road test is 65,288 miles. The reason for these videos and especially actually this road test section is to ensure that if anyone's online looking at any of our cars they get to see the very car advertised actually in operation. Um, the reason we've always felt it important is because, you know, like lots of people, we've been to see cars which have looked absolutely fine in photographs or description, but only to get there find out it's actually got an obvious fault that shows up when you drive the car. So that's why we do it. Um, also done on these very quiet country roads in this absolutely beautiful part of Gloucestershire. This forms part of the road test route we take our customers on, and the hope is, of course, it'll be representative of what you'd feel yourself should you go and test drive in a car. So coming to the car, as you will no doubt know from the advert, it's a, it's a wonderful car in terms of ownership. It was low mileage, just two owners from you, and a full Honda service history. I can't remember how many stamps, I think it was 11 or 12 stamps in the book. It's better, amazing history. And the investment in its servicing is immediately apparent when you drive the car, because it just feels as tight as a drum. It does not feel like a car of its generation, they were always way ahead of their time anyway, but certainly of its age. Um, turn the key, engine starts instantly, and settles to smooth, even idle. There are no warning lights on the dashboard at all, relating to the engine or any other part of the, the car. And temperature 
gauge running at a third, which is exactly where it's meant to be on a Honda vehicle. Um, the engines are brilliant. Um, Honda build the best four-cylinder engines in the world for lots of reasons. Um, it is, by country mile, the most reliable and longest-lasting engine in its class. Um, cam chain driven, there's no cam belts to worry about on them. But more than that, it's just a joyous engine to use day in, day out. It's flexible, it's docile, um, it's keen. It, it's got a sweet edge to it. So when you do put your foot down and go, if I kick down now, it's just got a lovely induction sound. Um, it's just a marvel of engineering, um, way, way, way ahead of their time in terms of how they produce these things. Uh, but yeah, super unit. Engine then feeds them into the auto gearbox. Um, obviously the ratios have been selected to try and maximize the engine, in, both in terms of fuel economy and um, performance. And they've done a very nice job on it. It's a lovely gear box as well. Gear changes are slick and smooth. You hardly feel them. Um, and like the engine, it has a reputation for being incredibly robust. Um, notwithstanding that, you should always do the same checks just to make sure that the gear changes on the move are in fact nice and smooth and they are perfect in that sense. And then we come to what I've always maintained is not only the best part of the car, but also the most underrated part of the car and missed by the motor press, apart from a handful, car magazine notably. Um, the chassis is astonishing. It starts with the steering, which, like most modern-ish cars, uses electric power steering. Now, unfortunately, in lots of cars, that means you get a light, vague helm, and it's horrible. This has got a lovely weight to it, perfect weight, actually. It never, ever feels nervous on the road, but it feels completely accurate. As soon as you turn in, you know exactly where it's going to go. It's going to follow faithfully, but it does with lovely weighting. So when you go into the corners, can't really do it for the car in front but when you turn in it just it's so fluid almost oily in the way it goes through and the steering is a massive part of that um, it also by the way tracks nice and straight there's no vibrations at this speed or any speed up to the legal limit um, but the chassis the suspension is amazing um, it gives you this very well judged ride it's comfortable it's compliant deals with the imperfections very well indeed um, but on the flip side to it is just how capable it is. You know, I've driven these on race circuits when I, uh, for Honda, launch things. Um, also, you know, keenly on the road on occasion, very rarely, but um, there is a section of road not far from here, uh, which goes down to the Seven Bridge, a back road, uh, which is sort of like a lovely kind of snake, snaking road which really shows up a good chassis, but also highlights a really bad chassis, cars that sort of float and damping, it just isn't right. It, these cars are amazing down there. Um, it's so confident on the road. It, it changes direction, the lack of body roll, the tautness of the suspension, the feel you get through the steering. Uh, it just all makes up to make it a wonderful car for people that still enjoy their driving but also for people who just want to get from A to B comfortably. Incidentally, no knocking noises underneath, no rattles, clonks, nothing at all underneath the car. Uh, brakes are absolutely superb, bite beautifully, there's no pulsing or vibrations coming back through the brake pedal at all, so all in fine, fine fettle. And then we come inside. Um, typical Honda, beautifully put together car. Um, it doesn't feel like a 13 year old car inside. It still feels actually reasonably modern. It's modern to stretching, I know, um, but because I hate these big tablet things on dashboards these days. Uh, you've got a reset, recessed sat nav screen, nice and big, so it takes a lot of the glare off it. Um, don't blow that. You've got your radio separate from the um, main screen. And then below that, again, you've got the dual zone climate control system, so you can have different temperatures side to side if you so wish. And that pumps out absolutely ice cold air, by the way. And then you've got your heated seats. But it's the detailing, the quality of the switch gear, everything is just beautifully, beautifully engineered. And then directly in front, you've got your classic Honda um, dashboard binnacle. It's all symmetrical, big, very nicely um, detailed 
gauges which means you can sort of clearly see what you speed you're going at revs all that kind of stuff but instantly without having to sort of squint to try and work out what you're looking at and then you've got this lovely leather bound steering wheel finally uh, which feels absolutely great in hand um, these are I mean I'm biased I adore these cars but I always said you know there's a handful of cars of this generation that were actually really very 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 good um, I always thought the Ford Mondeo chassis was one of the best chassis ever it was a fantastic chassis still is actually but they tended to kind of fall apart a bit the suspension would need a lot of work to keep them in nice order um, but you know, as good as this in, in, in so many ways um, but the overall car nowhere near as good then you've got something like the BMW 3 Series which is more overtly sporting um, but again build quality reliability over the long term nothing like the Honda Accord um, and the chassis the extra 2 or 3% it actually manages to give you is at the expense of what this can do the whole time which is the driving very comfortably from A to B whereas the BMW is never quite settled but the more sporty ones this just hits a real sweet spot for car design it is simply genius actually uh, very very few modern cars drive anything like as well as this um, I can't fault it, it drives absolutely beautifully